back that's going to uh, video her presentation. So um, we're glad to have them here as our guests. She has been good enough to rearrange her schedule and uh, be able to come and present to you today on her faith tradition, which is Islam. Okay. Um, she has a nice presentation with a lot of information. Um, and hopefully at the end she'll be able to take some of your questions on anything, any questions you might have on, on Islam. Um, she works as a volunteer with the Islamic... Uh, so, well, it, it, my job as a teacher is paid, but okay. uh, as, a presenta as a presenter, I am actually a volunteer, yes. Okay, with, uh -huh. the, uh, with the mosque in Irving, yes. all right. Not, not the one down at the end of the street here, that's the IAT mosque. Um, so hopefully at the end, for a couple of minutes, she'll tell us about uh, it's the not mosque in Irving. Irving. Yeah. And I will turn the class over to her. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, hi, my name is Ruba Kiwar, and uh, um, I am originally from Jordan. I was born in Denmark. Uh, from uh, I come from a Christian uh, background. My uh, family were Christian Arab, and uh, I converted to Islam in 2005. Um, my father was a pastor; he was an evangelist, and uh, uh, I just converted after I actually started to study about other religions. I studied Buddhist, uh, Buddhism, Hinduism, and uh, um, uh, Sikhism, and then finally I got to know about Islam, and then I turned to become a Muslim uh, in 2005. I, ha I hold a bachelor degree in Islamic studies and a certificate in Quranic recitation and Quranic studies. I, um, um, I do also presentations about Islam to non-Muslims, so this is not my first time doing a lecture like that. And also, uh, I, I work right now in the Islamic Center of Irving. Uh, it, is in, uh, it is located in Irving, one of the biggest Islamic centers in the area in, Tex in North Texas uh, as a Quranic teacher and Islamic studies teacher um, for second, third, and fourth grade, and also a presenter in the, uh, in the uh, center itself. Um, uh, this presentation is called The Fog is Lifting because it is going to be clarify a lot of things about Islam to you. Uh, not the Islam that we, or the Muslims that we see or uh, hear in the media, such as uh, ISIS and terrorists and all that. Uh, most of the uh, scholars in the area, or even in the, ho in the whole world, 99%, 0.9%, they condemn what the ISIS do. They are not actually doing the actions of the real teachings of Islam. And uh, a lot of people, they don't, they don't even consider them that they are from the fold of the Muslims. Uh, um, Islam, uh, we're going to learn about uh, uh, the meaning of Islam. <clears throat> Islam is not just a religion, but it is also a way of life, something that we uh, do every single minute in our life. It is something that uh, we practice every time and every day. Muslims, like Christians and Jews, consider themselves the descendant of Abraham. As we know that, uh, you know, as Abraham, peace be upon him, he had uh, his, two, uh, his two sons, one of them was Isaac, and he became, uh, uh, and then Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob the 12 sons, uh, the 12 tribes, and then they, they, they uh, Jews came, and then, and then we have, uh, he had the other son, Ishmael, Ishmael and his descendants, uh, the last prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that we're going to be talking about, uh, uh, he was also one uh, of the Muslim prophets and the last prophet. <clears throat> Muslims are 1.6 billion uh, of the population in the world, and only 20% of them are Arab. 80% of, uh, of the Muslims are actually non Arab, they don't speak even Arabic. Islam is M plus six plus five. M for the meaning, six for the six beliefs, and five for the five practices and deeds. And some people, they call them the six pillars of faith and five pillars of, or, uh, of deeds or Islam. M, these are the meaning, six beliefs and five deeds. The root word in Arabic of Islam is the letter seen, sa, la, and man. And uh, three words can be derived from this root. 
Istislam means submission. Salama means purity. And the last word, salam, means peace. So who are the Muslims? The Muslim is someone who submits to God and worship him purely. He or she should live in peace in this life and hereafter. So as you see the three words, submit for salama, uh, for istislam, purely is, uh, is salama and peace for salam. Muslims believe that everyone is born pure, ready to submit to God in nature. Islam is the action of the heart. Human being has free choice. No compulsion in religion. So I can't come to you and put a sword on your, on your neck and say, you become Muslim or, or I'm going to kill you, just like you see on media. There's nothing like this. Actually, there is a verse in the Quran that says that there is no compulsion in, in, in religion. And that's in chapter 2, verse 255. Humans are not born with inherited sins. So what is the original sin that it talks about in the Quran? The first sin is actually a story of Adam and Eve that we know. And we have, God is saying in the Quran, says, and we have certainly created you, O mankind, and given you human form. Then we said to the angels, prostrate to Adam. So they prostrated, except for Satan, he was not those who prostrated. So God asked Adam, uh, I mean, God asked Satan, he said, what prevented you from prostrating when I commanded you? Satan said, I am better than him. You created me from fire, and you created him from clay. Again, he said, I am better than him. You created me from fire, and you created him from clay. And I want to focus on this one. In our days, a lot of people, they think that they are better than others. They say, I am white, he's black. I am Arab, he's American. I am better, he's not, and so on. So the first sin in the Quran is racism. Racism. So God punished Satan and he said, God said, descend from paradise, from it is not for you to be arrogant therein. So get out, indeed you are of the deepest. So what is Adam's sin? A lot of people, okay, well, Adam sinned. Yes, Adam sinned. And it says that it is, he ate from the tree. Not only Adam. You know, a lot of people, they always blame Eve, that she's the one who uh, uh, seduced Adam to <coughs> sin. But actually, in the Quran, it doesn't actually, uh, it, doesn't, uh, uh, it doesn't mention Eve in there. It mentioned that both of them have sinned. And it says here, then Adam received from his Lord some words. And he accepted his repentance. So he repented and God accepted him. Indeed, it is he who is accepting of repentance the merciful. So Adam said, he said, our Lord. He's talking about my Lord and Eve Lord and, and Eve, Eve's Lord. So he's talking about both of them. He said, our Lord, we have wronged ourselves. And if you do not forgive us and have mercy upon us, we will surely be among the losers. And God accepted, accepted his repentance. So Muslims believe that all people are equal in the sight of God, like the teeth of the comb. One of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, there is no preference for Arabs over non-Arabs, nor for non-Arabs over Arabs. Neither is there preference for white people over black people, nor for black people over white people. Preference is only through righteousness. Islam, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, everyone is born Muslim by submission to God. Not Muslim as a religion. I'm talking about the submission to God, only one God. Okay? In it, in nature. But their parents make him either Jew or Christian or atheist or even any other religion. The beliefs of Islam are six. One is one almighty God, Allah. Second, the belief in the angel. Three, the scriptures of God. Four, the messengers of God. Five, the day of resurrection, and six, the divine destiny. I'm going to be talking about each one briefly. The belief of Allah. 
There is no deity, there is no deity worthy to be worshipped except but Allah. And Allah is the Arabic word for God in English. Just like we say in Spanish, Dios. Just like we say, uh, you know, God in English. Also Allah in Arabic. So uh, Allah is not actually a God with a small g. Allah means the creator. And I'm going to show you uh, the first page of the Bible, Genesis 1-1, in Arabic. And look at the word Allah in the first page of Genesis. It is mentioned seven times in the first paragraph, 37 times in the first page, a thousand of times in the whole Bible. So Allah means God, the almighty God. You can call him Jehovah, you can call him Elohim, and also Dios, Allah. <clears throat> in the, there's a Quran verses, there is nothing like unto him. He has no partners. He is the creator, he is neither male or female, and he is the provider. Where can we see God, Allah? There is a verse in the Quran that says, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the night and the day, are signs for those of understanding. That's in the creation. What about in ourselves? In the body human. God says, we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. But is it not sufficient concerning your Lord that he is over all things a witness? The existence of God, all these philosophers over here that you see that they were actually believing in God. So I'm going to give you only one example because of the time. He says, Rene says, I doubt that there is God, therefore I think. I think, then I exist. I exist, then I am created. Since I didn't create myself, then God created me. The second belief is to believe in the angels. Angels, they are the creatures of Allah. They are created from light. They do not have free will. And each angel does not does a specific t task. Those are the angels. The three belief is the scriptures. And there are five scriptures that God s talks about in the Quran. They are the Torah, that it was revealed by Moses, peace be upon him. The gospel, that it was revealed by Jesus, peace be upon him. The Quran, that it was revealed by Muhammad, peace be upon him. The scrolls of Abraham and the Psalms of David, peace be upon them all. And there are other also scriptures that God talks about in the Quran, but it does not, uh, it does not mention their names. The Torah. What does the Quran say about the Torah? Indeed, we set down the Torah in which was guidance and light, the prophets who submitted to Allah. What about the, the gospel? What God says about the gospel? It says, and we sent following in their footsteps Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah. And we gave him the gospel in which was guidance and light, and confirming that which preceded it of the Torah as guidance and instruction for the righteous. The scriptures. Angel Gabriel carried the message 100% correct to the messengers. The Quran's language is the only language that is still alive until now. The Quran has been maintained in the original language. That means Quran is maintained by Arabic. You can read the translations of the Quran, but we have so many uh, uh, we have so many uh, translations and versions of the meanings of the Quran. But if you want to read the Quran in the original language, it is only in Arabic. And it's only one book in Arabic, it's the Quran. But we can see other versions of the translations of the meanings of the Quran. The Quran is the last revelation of Allah, the principal source for every Muslim faith and practice. The Quran deals with every subject in life. The Quran offers law for a just society and proper human conducts and equitable economic, economic principles. The Quran deals with the relationship between the creator and the human. And also it deals between the relationship between each other. 
The opening chapter of the Al-Fatiha, I would love to read it for you. It says, in the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the words, the compassionate, the merciful, sovereign of the day of judgment. It is you we worship and we, you we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favor, not of those who have evoked your anger or those who have been astray. Another verse in the Quran says, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know each other. Indeed, the most noble one of you is not Arab. The, um, um, uh, indeed, the most noble of you is not white, is not black. The most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is knowing and acquainted. The Quran is the first verse that it was revealed in the Quran is read, study, have knowledge, seek the truth, search. That's what it means for read. The last verse that it was revealed in the Quran, and fear a day when you will be returned to Allah, then every soul will be compensated for what it earned, and they will not be treated unjustly. Knowledge in the Quran, and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. And because of that, a lot of people in the dark ages of the Europe, when, when they had ignorance, uh, you know, at, there was the Islamic empire that it was actually flourishing at that time because of all the scholars that they have, the Muslim scholars. And I would love to mention some of them. For example, we have Gaber. He was Gaber ibn Hayyan, the father of chemistry. Chem chemistry in Arabic is kimia, and the Latin word is alchemy. So it is actually an Arabic word before it was Latin. Uh, the other one is algorithm. He was he invented algebra, calculus, and algorithm. May Allah forgive him for that. I hate right. algorithm and calculus. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So that's the God of yes, that's the one. <laughs> Avicenna, he was the, middle, uh, the medical practitioner. His books were recognized to be the authority of medicine for over 500 years. Until today, his book called Al-Qanun, or Al-Qanun in Arabic, means the law of medicine that it is taught until now. He has two books. The first one is called the Book of Healing. The second one is called the Canon Law of Medicine. Also, we have Al-Zahrawi, or it's called Abu Qasis in English. And he is the father of modern surgery. He has he invented over 202 tools of surgery that many of them are still in use until now. For example, the tweezers, the, the scissors, all these things that he actually invented. There are some miracles uh, in the Quran that they are scientific miracles that they have been in the Quran for a long time ago. But then after that, people invented or discovered things that it is actually in the Quran, and then. Uh, uh, some of those scholars actually they converted to Islam after they sa say that. I'm just going to give you one example. For example, here it says, "Does man think that we will not assemble his bones?" And that talks about the day of judgment. Yes, we are able even to proportion his fingerprints. And I was like, "Why would God say about the fingerprint? Why he doesn't mention, for example, the eyes, which is more complicated, or the ears?" But actually, after they discovered, they discovered that there is one thing that it identify us from all our body is the fingerprint. And even the government use the fingerprint to identify the people because each one has a unique fingerprint that it, it will never be similar to another human. <coughs> also, another one is says, so, so whoever Allah wants to guide, he expands his heart, his breast to contain Islam. And whoever he wants to misguide, he makes his breast tight and constricted as though he were ascending into the sky. And as we see, like every one person, uh, any person that ascend in the sky to the, until he reaches to the space, you know, the pressure of the air comes down, less pressure, he gets suffocated and die. And that's what it says over here. The most you go up, it is like your chest is const uh, const uh, constricted. 
Islam is one God, one humankind, one God, one religion, one God, many messengers, many messengers, many books. And so all of them had the same doctrine, worship God alone and do not associate any partners with him. That's Islam. <clears throat> if there is only one religion, then it should be suitable for all people from different backgrounds. Islam is a revelation against any tradition. Islam is the only religion that it's not called after someone. So for example, India, uh, Hinduism is called after India, Christianity after Christ, uh, Buddhism after Buddha. Islam is the only religion that it, was, it, it means submission to God and has nothing to do with any human or country. The prophets, the messengers of Allah, the best human beings that they walked on earth, they do not commit major sins, None of them is divine or the son of the divine. And Jesus of Christ, Jesus Christ is a messenger of God like other messengers. That's what Muslims believe. Jesus Christ, he is one of the best people walked on earth. He is a role model for every humankind. He was born miraculously without a father. His mother, Mary, peace be upon him, by the Quran, is the purest woman who walked on the face of earth. Jesus was mentioned 25 times in the Quran. Mary, peace be upon him, peace be upon her, was mentioned 36 times in the Quran. Three chapters in the Quran talk about Jesus, his mother. The first one is called Al Amran, means the family of uh, Mary, peace be upon him. The second one is called Al Ma'ida, means the Last Supper. It talks about the Last Supper of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and the last. And the third chapter, it talks about Mary, Maryam, peace be upon her. The messenger of Allah, what does God say in the Quran? Says, say, O believers, we have believed in Allah and what has been revealed to us and what has been revealed to Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and ja Jacob and the descendants of what was given to Moses and Jesus and what was given to the prophets from their Lord, we make no distinction between any of them and we are Muslims in submission to him. So all the messengers were actually Muslims. It means that they submitted to only one God, Allah. So about Prophet Muhammad, he is not the founder of Islam like some people read. He is the last messenger and the final messenger that was, he was sent to earth by God. His traditions are called Sunnah and are the number two source of Islamic knowledge after the Quran. People used to call him the trustworthy and the honest, but because he became a prophet after that, the pagans who did not believe in him, they started persecuting him. So they killed many of his companions, they persecuted him, they, they boycotted him for three years. He was tortured by the pagans. His followers suffered from persecution and killing. And his uncle, one of his, uh, the pagans that they didn't, he didn't believe in them, but he was a supporter of the prophet. He came to the prophet and after the tribes of, of course gathered with him and they, he, they gave him a suggestion. They said, go and tell Muhammad, you know, let him come and worship our gods for one day. And then the next day we'll go and worship his God because they thought that God is like, a, like one of those idols that they worship. And so what Prophet Muhammad said, he said, even if you put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left hand in order to quit, I won't stop until the message is conveyed or I die of uh, trying or conveying it. He is a most beautiful example of merchant, father, husband, teacher, politician, Reformer, he gathered the tribes together and he made truce between uh, each other because the tribes used to uh, fight with each other like for the stupidest things. And warrior, and I'm talking about warrior here, not as a person go and just fight because he's fight, he wants to fight and kill people, but as a defender for his, uh, for his people. He was defending himself and his people also. He gave hope to billions. So one of his traditions, he said, if you are planting a tree, and the end of the word came, just go ahead and plant it quickly. And I was thinking like, you know, if the judgment day come, you know, who would think about like planting a tree? If you're planting a tree, go ahead and do it. 
But actually, this is a lesson for us. That means if you are doing something good and you know that this is the last thing that you, have, you do and you know that you're not going to see the results, go ahead and do it. And God will reward you for the results. Also, some of his teaching, if you see some, something wrong, and this is actually what I call the Bill of Rights of the Constitution because it talks about the freedom of speech. It says, if you see something wrong, then change it with your hand. If you are not able, then speak against it. If you are not able, then feel bad about it in your heart, but know that this is the weakest form of faith. <clears throat> also about his teachings, he says, none of you is truly a believer unless you wish to your neighbor what you wish is to yourself. He who eats his fill while his neighbor goes to sleep without food is not a believer. Also he says, the powerful is not he who knocks the other one down, Indeed, the powerful is the one who controls himself in a fit of anger. God does not judge according to your bodies and appearance, but as he scans your hearts and looks into your eyes, in your, into your deeds. I'm sorry. The most harmful container a person may fill in his stomach, few bites are enough for him, or else one-third for his food and one-third for his drink, and one-third for his bread. That's a good diet, right? <laughs> OK. <laughs> what Westerners talk about, uh, um, about uh, Prophet Muhammad? Let me talk about Gandhi, for example. He says, I became more than convinced that it was not the sword that won the place for Islam in those days of life. It was the rigid simplicity, the utter self-effacement of the Prophet the, uh, the scrupulous regard for his pledges, his intense devotion to his friends and followers, his intrepidity, his fearlessness, his absolute trust in God and in his own mission. Also, I'm going to go quick. Uh, Michael Hart, he wrote a book and he just died, I think, two years ago. Um, he wrote a book about the most influential people in history, and he wrote this book. He said, my choice of Muhammad to lead the list of the world's most influential persons may surprise some readers and may be questioned by others. But he was the only man in history who was supremely successful on both religious and secular levels. Also, Gibbon said, he's, he is the writer of the book, The Fall of the Roman Empire. He said, the sin of Muhammad in the eyes of the Christian West is that he did not allow his enemies to slaughter him or crucify him. However, he practiced his human rights by defending himself, his followers, and his religion. Then he vanquished his enemies. The Day of Judgment... And I'm going to go fast on this one. And that's the fifth belief of the Muslims. It is the death is beginning of true life. It's not the end. Second, there is a resurrection after death that everyone will raise again from death. And then everyone will read their books of deeds, the good and bad. And the end would be either going to hellfire or heaven. And the last belief, and this is one of the probably hardest people to believe, uh, or to understand, is nothing happens without the knowledge of Allah. If we really don't know what is right and what is wrong, so why are we exaggerating in our feelings? So if God forbids my brother died in a car accident, and I start asking God, why God did you take him? You know, but we really don't know what is the, the uh, you know, the purpose about that. You know, and this is just to change your feeling, you know, from anger to acceptance. It's just like faith. This is a divine destiny. Change the feeling of happiness and sadness to acceptance. Allah knows the past, the present, the future. And does that, contra does that contradict with the freedom of choice? That's just a question for you. And so uh, these are the six beliefs of Islam. So anyone, <coughs> I'm sorry, anyone believe in those six beliefs, you know, he is Muslim by heart. That means he submit to God by heart, okay? But uh, there are some other things that are called this, this, the five deeds or the five practices. So anyone is a Muslim also by practice, uh, you know, ha has to do these five things. And they are 
to declare the faith through the separate t uh, testimony, and we're going to talk about that. Two, to establish the prayers. Three, to pay the financial obligation. Four, fasting the month of Ramadan. And fifth, doing pilgrimage of Mecca. The, to declare the, uh, the separable testimony. So if someone actually is a, is a Muslim by heart and is ready to do the practices, he should do the, uh, first the testimony of faith. And it says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan rasulullah. And it means I bear witness that there is no deity worthy to be worshipped except Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. The second one is the five prayers. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, when you say that the testimony is pretty much liberty for Muslims, it means I will worship none but Allah, I will fear none but Allah, I will please none but Allah, I will ask none but Allah, I will love none but Allah and the ones who Allah loves, and also I will hate none except what Allah hates. And I'm talking here about the deeds, not the people. You know, I hate lying, I hate killing, I hate uh, doing bad deeds. That's what it means. The five deeds also, uh, the second one is a salah, means the prayer. And it means that uh, it has to be five times. And the five times are, one is at dawn time before sunrise. The second one is at noon time. The third one is afternoon, it's called asr. And the, uh, the, the fourth one is after sunset. The last one is at night time. And it has to be any, on any pure spot on earth. Uh, and it has to be towards Mecca. And Mecca is, uh, is a city in Saudi Arabia. And uh, it is just a direction. So this cube over here that you see, it's only a building. It's empty. There is nothing in there. Okay. And even if someone comes and destroys it, People, Muslims, are going to still pray towards that, that, uh, uh, that direction. And in the United States, it's actually northeast, northeast, or east north. Okay. <clears throat> the third obligation is, or the deed, is to pay an obligation of zakah. And it is 2.5 of the saving held for a year. Now, there is a difference between charity and zakah. Zakah is an obligation, it is the right of the the rich people on the poor, or the poor people on the rich. That means, you know, if someone uh, has for over a year, let's say three thousand dollars, it has never been touched. It's a saving that it has never, it has never been spent. It's not from pay, your paycheck. Okay, so they take two point five percent of that. They take it to a place called Baitul Mal or the treasury, and then after that, the treasury will go ahead and uh, uh, and uh, separate and take it to to the poor people. So it is different than sadaqah or charity. Charity, can, anyone can do it. Muslims, than muslims uh, uh, old, young, anyone can do it, OK? So even the poor people can give poor people, and God will reward you for the charity that you do. But zakah is actually an obligation of the poor on the rich people. Second, 5 to 10% of any agricultural income, 20% of any extracted resources and minerals. And it's not a charity, as I said. It's growth and purification of the soul to the soul. So whoever does zakah, also he purify himself. It is one of the good deeds. The fourth thing is to fast, to fast the, Ram the month of Ramadan. And Ma Ramadan is coming next month, hopefully. So um, <clears throat> it's going to be, I think, on the 18th of June. Uh, and it means no eating or drinking or sexual activities from downtime to sunset. And it is an exercise for the body. That means it is a way to discipline oneself to be behind the wheel driving himself, not the body driving him. And the last thing, and yeah, we're done on time. Okay, the last thing is to perform pilgrimage or hajj. It means to go to Mecca, and there is uh, uh, the place where it's called uh, you know, Mecca or uh, the place also in Kaaba where we go and do a pilgrimage and it is a spiritual journey that people do people do and it is once in a lifetime forever whoever he can do it and able to do it and it is a university of the religion and it changes the life of the people one of them was Malcolm X Malcolm X is a great leader in America he is a legend for many people 
He was uh, the one who, uh, who um, fought against slavery and oppression and uh, uh, an equality between people, between black people and white people. And his story was, uh, when he converted to Islam, he converted to a twisted, tw twisted sect called the Nation of Islam. The Nation of Islam, the founder, Muhammad Elijah, was a racist. He thought that black people are actually supreme over the white people, so he was a racist. And uh, that's what he thought, and he called it the Nation of Islam. And then what happened is Malcolm X decided to go to do the pilgrimage. So he went to, to Mecca, to Saudi Arabia, and he was shocked to see all kind of people over there. There are every year they go at least three or four million people, even, even the, the government of Saudi Arabia, they close the doors, they don't even let, you know, each country has to send in, like uh, a certain number of people to go over there, because a lot of people go over there. So what happened is he went to Mecca, and he was surprised to see all these people from all different nations and backgrounds and colors uh, that they're helping each other. You know, I went over there. You never get hungry. I'm just telling you that people give you food from everywhere. I mean, seriously, you don't know even you don't even know where they come from. And so, uh, uh, and so he kind of corrected his faith and his doctrine, and he became and he became into the mainstream of the uh, correct Islam. So he said this, when he came back, he said, during the 11 days here in the Muslim world, I have eaten from the same plate, drank from the same glass, with fellow Muslims who their skin is the whitest of white, their eyes are the bluest of blue, their hair is the blondest of blonde, and in their deeds and in their worship, I felt the same sincerity of the black people. That's what he said. And so he corrected his faith and he became Muslim. Thank you very much for listening. This is my presentation about Islam, and I am ready to take any questions you want. <laughs> <laughs> any question? Yes, sir. What's the difference between uh, Sunni and Shia, something like that? Right, okay. This is a very <clears throat> uh, uh, a long answer, but it is actually a political and history. It has nothing to do with the doctrine, because Muslim Shias, Muslim Sunni, they have the same doctrine, the same beliefs. The thing is, <coughs> you know, Sunni means the people who follow the way of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. The Shia people are, means a sect, that they, they actually, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, they're supposed to be, the uh, four leaders came after the Prophet Muhammad, they are the companions of the Prophet, uh, you know, and then what happened is, uh, the Shia, they said that Ali, his cousin of the Prophet Muhammad, is supposed to be the Khalifa, the, ru the ruler, not the companions. But again, because of the, you know, Islam does not really discriminate just because he's a family of the Prophet, that means he has to be a leader. But, you know, Islam also talks about democracy. People choose the leader, right? So what happened is they chose those companions because the wisest, uh, and then Ali was the fourth Khalifa, he was the fourth uh, leader after those three. And uh, Shia say, no, Imam Ali is supposed to be, he is supposed to be instead. And also there is a sect even say, they go even extreme, and they say he's supposed to be the prophet instead of Prophet Muhammad. And also, because uh, the family of, uh, of uh, Prophet Muhammad were killed, like Ali and his family, you know, they go and they start lashing themselves, like they are feeling guilty that he's supposed to be you know, he's supposed to be not to be killed and all that, and God forgive our sins. So they start like, you know, torturing themselves in one day of the year, and they, they slash themselves and all that. And they are, you know, again, this is all like, you know, political and history-wise things. And because of these differences, Sunni and Shia keep fighting with each other about the same thing. And even like if you go to Iraq or Iran or things like that, Sunni and Shia keeps fighting and killing each other, and it is so sad. It is so sad. But, uh, you know, uh, the, the best thing as a Muslim to do is just always go to the source, which is the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet uh, Muhammad, peace be upon him. So, yeah. Any other question? Yes. Um, since Islam acknowledges that, you know, like Jews and the prophets of mm -hmm. Moses and Abraham, you know, all follow the same God, does that mean y'all also 
I know the Quran is your holy book, but do you all at least respect or adhere, adhere yes. the Ten Commandments as well, like follow those right. rules? Yes, yes, oh. yes. Muslims actually recognize the Torah. They recognize also the Injil, which means the Gospel of Jesus, but only the Injil that it was revealed by God Himself to the Prophet. Okay. So uh, if you go back and read the scriptures, I mean, I, I don't want to be offensive about it for some Christians, but if you go and read the uh, the four Gospels of in Matthew, John, you know, again, they were written not by Jesus, but by the companions yeah. of Jesus. Okay, so we actually recognize that the book that was revealed by God himself, 100% correct to the prophets. Okay, and the same thing with Torah of Moses, peace be upon, of Moses, peace be upon him, that it is only the book that it was revealed by God, and this is what we recognize. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> and you know, this one is the, like, to pray on a purest, uh, and the pure, uh, any any uh, any spot on earth is pure. Okay. So I can't just pray over here if I want. Okay. I can't pray down outside in the dirt, but I can't pray in a bathroom because it's impure or on a grave. Okay. Because the grave there's a human underneath, just a respect for that body. You see what I'm saying? If I know that there's a grave in here, I'm not supposed to be praying. But other other any other spot on earth, I can't pray on. Because God created this earth and it's pure, so any place you can bring. Yeah. <laughs> any other questions? Okay, since we have only five minutes, I would like to talk about uh, the, the role of women in Islam. And a lot of people ask about that. Uh, just like any other religion, you know, a lot of people would like, especially the leaders of that religion, likes to melanize the religion and make it for male instead for female. But actually, in the in religion of Islam, uh, uh, Islam respect the state of woman, uh, of uh, and respect the owner and honor the woman. And I'm going to give you some examples at the time of liberty, the time of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Before he dies, he wrote a will, and he said that he he has one of his wives. Her name is Aisha. And she's only 17 years old when she when he died. And she were the most knowledgeable person because she was a companion of the Prophet that she lived with him for so long and she knew everything about him. So he said, if I die and you want any information about Islam, go and ask this woman. And he, he pointed at Aisha or uh, may Allah peace with her, say in Arabic, may Allah be pleased with her. And so uh, uh, anyone used to go and needed any information, they would go and knock on Aisha's door and ask questions. And uh, the half of the religion, 50% of the traditions that we have of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, it is narrated by Aisha, by the way. Second also, that uh, there were so many women at the time of the Prophet Muhammad that they were doctors, they were nurses, they were merchants. Uh, his wife, Khadisha, was a merchant. Uh, she was a businesswoman. You know, she had properties, we had, she had, uh, you know. And also, uh, one of the, his uh, companion, I think her name is Sadia, that she was also a warrior. So when, uh, when the prophet uh, was hit on his head in one of the wars, in the, one of the battles, and he fainted, she actually stood in front of his body and she defended him. She was aunt. His aunt, yeah. What's her name? Sumaya. Sumaya, sorry, Sumaya. Yeah, and also, uh, uh, after the death of the Prophet Muhammad, uh, the Khalifa, the second Khalifa, Omar bin Khattab, Omar, he was on the pulpit and he was speaking up and he made a mistake. One of the women, she was a companion of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, she stood up and she corrected him. And Omar said, may Allah forgive me and have mercy of, the, of me. Omar had mistaken and a woman corrected him. So he gave an honor and, uh, you know, for the woman. So in, in society also, there is a, a tradition of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, uh, the heaven, is, on, uh, the heaven is, is under the feet of, uh, of the mothers. So it means also honoring the mothers, and they give a high state of the mothers, uh, because she is the one who raised the children, and she's the one who raised the men, right? You know, and uh, they, they give a high state of, uh, of the woman. But unfortunately, you know, the world is not perfect. The society is not perfect. A lot of Muslims, they uh, they cannot like uh, put tradition with Islam. They put their uh, old traditions and they put it in Islam. And even the Prophet وسلم, peace be upon him, said that if you uh, take it, you know, throw this tradition away because it stinks. That's what he said. You know, when he saw two companions are were fighting with each other, whose tribe is better? One person he said, my tribe is better than the other one. 
they were kind of like, you know, and he said, throw it away, it stinks. All tradition stinks. I just go with the teachings of Islam, which is humanity for, you know, for Muslims. So that's, uh, you know, thank you. Uh, ICI, since you mentioned it, ICI is the Islamic Center of Irving. It's uh, one of the biggest uh, mosques in the area. And they have, um, they have different activities. One of them they do uh, like for converts who convert to Islam, they do like uh, uh, free classes for them for Islam studies. They have an open house every Sunday. Anyone has a question can go on that day and ask questions or even you can schedule a visit. Excuse me. And you go to islamiccenterofirving.org and you can schedule a visit to go over there and ask any question. They can, can even do a tour for you, take you all, all the places where people pray and do the washing and all that. Uh, uh, we have also a big school. It's a full-time school from pre-K one all the way to 12th grade. Even the 12th grade, it is certified and accredited that they uh, take also the students, uh, they can transfer to the university or to the college, and some of them actually got like full scholarships because they're really good, mashallah. <laughs> and also, um, what else? Uh, so I teach there, it's a paid uh, uh, job that I teach there, it's uh, Quranic studies uh, for second, third, and fourth, and now I'm teaching also not paid for graphic design because that's also my major in, in my associate degree. And also, uh, you know, I'm, I do it also for free as a volunteer. You know, anyone would like to have a presentation about Islam or anything about Islam, so I'm ready to, to help anytime. They also have a special program for deaf people. Um, like, uh, you know, deaf people that they can't hear, they do uh, special classes for them, for Islam classes and all that. And they have also their media, uh, uh, you know, projects and all that. Uh, you know, so uh, the Imam, Imam Zia, he is uh, the leader of the Zia Sheikh, his name, and he is a great man, and I'm saying that because he's a great speaker. Whenever they have an interfaith, uh, uh, whenever they have an interfaith uh, uh, like program or something like that, they do always call him because whenever they bring the rabbi or a pastor or any interfaith event, they call him because he's such a great speaker, also a presenter for Islam and Muslims. So yeah, any, any other questions? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you so much for everything. And Thank you, Ms. Ruba. You're welcome. Um, just a quick reminder that uh, next Monday we'll finish up Christianity. And also I'll pass out a short little guide uh, to help you on the final quiz. Quiz 4 is going to be a tab on the eCampus site, and it will appear Monday. Okay, you'll have until midnight next Friday to take that quiz. You'll have 60 minutes. It will post automatically when the time expires. It should be more than sufficient time. So there, there will be five short answer questions and a bonus questionnaire. Um, and I will pass out that uh, short little guide on Monday, okay? Have a nice weekend and enjoy the rain. It's supposed to be really hot and sunny tomorrow. So. <laughs> anyway, take care. And uh, we'll see you on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got you more. Oh, if you need. Oh, this is very fun. Okay. If you need. Heather, did you get a hard copy?